Hello guys, welcome to my Range Rover channel. Land Rover, Range Rover, you name it. Maybe it's gonna be a Jaguar channel as well, but I do not own any Jaguars, but it's about the same type of issue. This is a Jaguar engine, 4.4 liter V8. So this is a 2006 Range Rover here. Uh, it is a Range Rover Sport. I had an overheating issue, guys, when I bought this thing. I fixed it. Later on to create an overheating uh, issue again, only then to fix it again. To then, while making a video to you guys, I will then show you that I created a problem in the process again, which will show you guys how easy it is to create an air in the system if you don't do things correctly. So, one thing I do want to mention to you guys, right now it's not overheating, I just drove it uh, for 22 minutes and it's still idling. I want to give you guys a walk around um, of this Range Rover. Um, I've done some things to it. And I do want to recommend that you guys watch the videos on my channel about um, about what was going on and stuff like that. And if your Range Rover is overheating, there's a very good chance that you created an air pocket in your system or your mechanic did or somebody did because you were not sure uh, about like what's gonna happen and you did something which seemed like meaningless, which is exactly what I did. And I will show you in this video kind of like what I did and um, that caused it to overheat again. Like, but there's several things that I did, but the, the thing is last time when I fixed that I drove it for 15 minutes, just fine, drove it home, no problem. And then I started recording a video for you guys, showing you guys what I did to release the air pressure. But of course, uh, I caused an air pocket by doing so because the engine was running. So that's important. So let me give you guys a walk around uh, of the Range Rover and I will explain to you guys how to get rid of your uh, overheating issues on your Range Rover um, in a shorter type of form. But I do highly, highly recommend that you uh, watch my other videos, guys, because you will see everything that I did on cut and you'll be able to. Uh, see what I did and what I did not do. And yes, if you're a mechanic, you'll be like, okay, maybe that's wrong. But here's the thing, guys. Keep in mind, I am not a mechanic. I am a do-it-yourself or DIY guy. I own 34 cars. Every single car is like a new learning experience. I am very new to the Range Rover brand. But guys, that being said, I bought this Range Rover with overheating issue and fixed it in one day. And then I drove it for two months, no issues. And only caused this issue to happen just yesterday it started overheating. And then today I stopped the issue uh, from happening, caused it again, and then in the video, I I caused it not to overheat anymore. And um, this is why I could now explain to you guys in the shortest amount of time exactly uh, what went wrong, what to do, what not to do. And I could show you this guys with video uh, as well. Uh, so, you know, stay tuned for that, uh, you know, in a shorter form uh, in, this, uh, in this type of video. Uh, I just want to kind of give it to you know like a proper introduction because I sort of just like went into it and I started working on it and showing you guys everything that's going on but anyways let me so first of all take a look at this uh, Range Rover um, of course it did not look like that when I bought it let me just give you guys a walk around I think it's uh it's completely beautiful I really love Range Rovers uh, especially the Range Rover Sport, just because, I mean, Sport, you know? Wow, is my lights fogging up? Yeah, brand new light started fogging up. Okay, interesting. I went through a car wash and there's that. Um, so I did replace all the badges on it. Uh, all the badges are brand new. Uh, the lights are brand new. Uh, these rear lights, this light is brand new. Um, I painted uh, the bottom bumper and my tow hitch. I painted it all black. Um, I did replace the, the tires. So I got these tires from eBay. Paid 550 bucks for them. These are 22 inch wheels. Uh, Capricorn uh, UHP. So anyways, doesn't matter. They're 22s. 550 bucks is a good deal. Um, oh yeah, I did remove this piece, you know, it unclips and I painted it silver. And this is Range Rover uh, HSC model, but I batched it out to make it kind of like uh, HSC 
and I put like our uh, dynamic SVR badge. I replaced this badge to be a black one. One of the Range Rover caps was missing on that side. Just bought a whole new set, but this is an old one. And I replaced it on that side. I think this really matches it really nicely. This is a new grill, which is a sport. My vehicle is not supercharged, but heck, the supercharged badge looks nice over there. This is why I did that. I buffed out the headlights. Now, I did not even send them. I just basically buffed them out with a sponge uh, and a drill. Uh, I did not do anything invasive. I just basically buffed it out like that. Now, this grill is brand new as well. I had a white grill before. I also installed a black uh, badge over here. Also put the uh, R Dynamic and a brand new Range Rover badge. So these are kind of cool, 3D, sort of like carbon fiber with badges. Uh, I did a lot of different things to it. Also brand new windshield wipers. Um, but anyways, let's take a look at the temperature gauge. As you can see, the temperature gauge is not overheating. I had this thing idling, just sitting here, just idling. Um, as you can see, there's no leaks coming from the bottom. Now, today my radiator was leaking. It no longer leaks. It's because I use a uh, stop leak uh, radiator fix. And, um, you know, and apparently it, it worked. It sealed up the radiator, so it's no longer leaking. So that is a good thing. Now that is a temporary solution. So basically, guys, right now I'm gonna I'm gonna explain to you guys everything in short form, everything kind of like what I did um, to keep this Range Rover from overheating. This is in short form. I do recommend watching a long form uh, video. Uh, I, I'm gonna have like several different ones with everything that was going on, um, just to make it easier for you guys to be able to follow through. You could jump to the last one to see kind of like what happened, um, how I fixed it, or you could just watch this one and I'll explain it. But if you're having a lot more type of issues, it's still overheating, then take a look at other videos that I did because any one of those things could have contributed to the fact that it's not overheating anymore. Plus. Um, I did use up uh, almost two gallons of water. So I used up a gallon and three quarters of water. So that kind of tells you something. Now, I did not see that much water being lost. Now, some of it could have been lost uh, due to vapors coming out uh, when I opened it up because water, once it's heated up, it creates steam and steam is sort of like gassy and it escapes. So some water could have escaped as steam because a lot of it was lost because I did not see this much water leaking out. Plus, when I left the house, I, I actually, um, I added about uh, half a gallon of water uh, directly to my uh, thermostat housing. It's when I went to the store and stuff started overheating, like I bought like four gallons of water and uh, I had, I was prepared and about the radar stop leak. So now let's begin by showing you the stop leak that I used. So anyways guys, sorry for the noise in advance. Um, I just let my engine idle and stuff. Uh, you know, here's the water level. In case you want to see. But anyways, I bought a bottle of this, which has block seal, and I bought a, a cooling system repair. So both of these has cooling leak fixed. So this has for bigger problems, right? And this says it's fixing. Um, so you could just take a look at the bottles. This is what I used. So when it started overheating, right? I went to Walmart right away and I op I have tools with me actually, but I was missing a wrench, so I had to go buy a wrench. But anyways, I opened up my uh, thermostat housing, which the thermostat is currently out. It's not existing right now because I'm having these issues. So I want to make sure that I don't cause any more problems. I want to make sure to keep the water circulating. But anyways, thermostat is not installed. It's just a house and water's free flowing. So what I did is when it started overheating, obviously I lost some water. I waited till it cools down. And while I went to the store, it cooled down and I came back. I poured this block seal directly inside over there. Okay. Right into the block. Now you could put it in the expansion tank and it doesn't necessarily say that you have to put it to the block, but that's what I did. I felt that that will do the best amount uh, you know, for it. So, so the very next thing I did is this had 
minor tap of water in here as well because some of it leaked out. I poured this stuff directly in. Then I filled it up to the proper um, water level. And when I did that, I started up the vehicle, it was still overheating. So I'm gonna explain to you guys what I, what I did to stop the overheating process. So when it started overheating, um, I basically let the system cool down. And when it cooled down, waited nine minutes. I opened up this pressure relief valve and I let some of the remaining air out of the system. Then I closed it. Then I opened up the radiator cap and the fluid started going down, 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 down. At the same time, I had a water bottle ready and I started adding water directly to it. And when I did that, it keeps sucking the water in. And that took about three quarters of a gallon, surprisingly, pouring a little bit of time and that done that. Altogether, I've used a gallon and three quarters of water from another gallon. So almost two gallons. Also, I did replace the radiator cap. This is a new cap. But I miss, oh yeah, by the way, so when I did that, right, I turned the vehicle on, I had it run for four minutes. It was not overheating. Then I started preparing myself to leave. So it idled another, another minute. I looked and I'm like, okay, five minutes on the clock. And then I'm thinking, okay, it's not overheating still. And um, currently it's been probably like over 30 minutes since I've been on a drive. It's been idling the whole time. And, and 15 minutes of driving uh, and the rest of it was idling. So everything's fine now. But a mistake would be right now for me to come up and open up the radiator cap. Because if I do that, I sort of like disbalance the whole system and I will add the air pocket. But I'm not sure what's a bigger mistake, to do that or to open up this here. Because I open up this to relieve uh, pressure while the engine is running. And obviously it still had vapors. And I thought that by me relieving these vapors, I will cause the water to rise and get rid of the air pocket that way because I thought, you know, uh, air basically turns into like exhaust gases in the building. That's kind of like the, the theory that I had, but I'm no scientist, so I probably messed that whole thing up. Probably why I caused the engine to overheat, you know. Uh, well, to go into the overheating. I never let it overheat at all, so. So never open up this uh, pressure release valve while the engine is running. But I do not have it tight, like really tight. I have it tight by hands. So the reason you need to bring you like a pressure cap and it only lasts like three years. So if yours is more than three years old, go ahead and replace it because it says they need to hold 60 PSI of pressure. And if it, do if it doesn't or holds too much, you also create a problem in the full system. Now, also today my radiator was leaking because another mistake that I did uh, is yesterday when I replaced my thermostat with a new one I didn't have any issues you know so I didn't think nothing of it so I replaced the thermostat with a new one and when I removed it I could clearly see there was water in there like everything was good the engine was full of water so I put a thermostat there and then thinking that okay I did lose a little bit of water so I added some water to the to the pressure to the overflow tank not realizing that I probably put too much and I when I put too much water in there plus I had an old cap I think that once the engine heated up the water needed to go somewhere because once it heats up it goes it rises to the bottle when it overheats as you can see it's not overheating so it's not rising so when it overheats the water will rise all the way up so um, when I did that it started overheating Plus, the water did not have anywhere else to go. Plus, it created other pressures and stuff in the system uh, because the water is no longer circulating properly. So the weakest point that I could find was by busting my radiator. And this is why I still have not replaced the radiator because had it been a new radiator, right? It would have been, the radiator would have, would have been great. But because I don't have a new radiator, it would find another weak link in the system, which could be the heater core because it's still old. And that would be annoying to replace because that's going to be leaking somewhere underneath the dash. It could bust a pipe. I could tell these pipes are new. But they still got the markings on them and everything. 
I mean, now that they're dirty looking, you know, might not seem like new, but I could tell somebody messed with this thing before when I bought it. It actually had pink fluid in there. Right now, it does not have pink fluid. And it did when I bought it. It was like pink, like it was like proper level. But it started overheating on me once I started driving it, even though I'd never messed with the system because they sold it at the auction for 2,500 bucks, which in reality, I paid about 3,300, not including the towing because I could not get rid of my overheating issue. Therefore, I could not drive it home because um, I really did not even know what it was. And I, I tried everything that I could in the parking lot, but I did not know how to properly bleed the system. But I just gave up a little bit too soon at that time because the next day, I have not done anything, nothing, so zero. The vehicle was delivered to me and all of a sudden I was able to drive it and have not had a problem since. Uh, up until yesterday, it was working great. And even the radiator is still up because when I bought it, the weakest link was also the radiator, it was uh, busted. So I ordered brand new radiator, brand new thermostat, brand new water pump, and those things came in. And of course I could replace the radiator. Uh, but, you know, I still did not know what's causing this type of problems. You know, I don't want to install a new radiator and cause all the problems in the process, but now I know that, okay, that is that. Now, one thing that I, I do have a concern for is the thermostat that I did install. Is it the proper thermostat though? Is it the proper one? And before I replace, before I replace the radiator, I need to, Determine. Okay, I replaced the thermostat. Is it gonna start overheating? And follow the proper procedures where I could bleed the system again and see if the uh, if the thermostat is gonna work properly. Um, if it will work properly and it's not gonna create any more radiator leaks and stuff like that, then I could be convinced that if I replace the radiator, chances are that everything's gonna work about the same. So. I do not want to replace the radiator up until I had a chance to test the thermostat because you do want to install the thermostat and have a normal situation where if the thermostat is installed, your engine could get to the proper temperature and uh, it's gonna be great because right now it's constantly, fluid is constantly circulating, which in this case is uh, it's water mixed with radiator fluid. Um, I, don't even, I don't even know how much radiator fluid is left, if any, you know. But doesn't matter, it's fluid, or water, whatever it is in your situation. In my situation, probably 90% water, you know. Um, distilled water, but still water not, not nonetheless. So that's what's keeping the engine cooled. And apparently it's enough to keep it cooled. Um, it's a summertime, so, you know, we don't have to worry about freezing. I just looked uh, to see if it's overheating at all, because I do want to keep an eye on it. I could see that nothing has changed. The fluid level stayed about the same as what it was. Um, so let's go ahead and actually close up this hood. And let's see. Okay. So it's good. So, so basically, uh, I was gonna tell you guys something else and I'm not sure if this is what I want to tell you. But when I was telling you guys about the thermostat, and replacing it and stuff like that. Uh, oh yeah, I wanted to tell you this. Before I attempt to replace the thermostat, I wanna test the thermostat to see at what temperature does the thermostat open up. Um, now I bought this thermostat from eBay for 20 bucks. Now it is recommended that you use Range Rover, Land Rover original parts because then it's not gonna be a guessing game. Like you will know, okay, I bought original parts and okay things should be working it's a brand new water pump brand new thermostat you know you're not gonna really be um guessing things including a overflow cap like so i bought my overflow cap for 16 bucks i cannot imagine it would cost any more than that uh if i do not buy original um but nonetheless i'm using right now ebay parts that's that's what i'm using uh, to really test these things, but I do think that you should be getting original stock because if you don't, you're always going to wonder, uh, is that the part failure? Is that my engine? Is that the head gasket? You know, and it, 
could ultimately cause you to spend more money than you have to. But in my situation, I like to make videos, I like to test things, and if things are working, why switch? You know, so if this is gonna work out for me, then I'm gonna be okay with it. And I could tell you what, what part I bought, and you could buy that same part, and then you could install a new vehicle knowing that it worked on mine, then it's gonna work on yours. But I still don't know whether these things will work or not, like if they're working good. I mean, at this point, my engine's not overheating, but so the cap I bought, okay, the cap is working. But the thermostat I bought, when I installed it, I mean, I did drove about 150 miles on it, and then my vehicle started overheating. So it, it took a while for it for some reason, but to start overheating, but uh, I did remove it. And even though I removed it and replaced it today with a free flowing, non-existent thermostat, just the housing, basically. I I basically poked that thermostat out of there, you know. So now I know the system, you know, water could be free flowing, but it will not free flow if you got an air, air bubble in your system. So if you got an air pocket, I mean air pocket, not a bubble, excuse me, air pocket. Pocket could be pretty big. Could be a gallon size, size of a gallon. It could be a gallon and a half, and that could cause an overheating issue really, really quickly. So at this point, it's not overheating anymore, so it's good. I don't want to really mess with it right now. The radiator is not leaking, and uh, today I need to do some other things, so I'm not gonna really worry about that and attempt to use the vehicle uh, as it is right now. So hopefully I don't run into any issues. Um, but with that being said, how am I, how am I gonna test uh, the thermostat that I bought from eBay? Um, it, because there was no place where it said what temperature it needs to open up at, just, just the thermostat. And it looks just like original wood. So I'm just basically gonna boil some water and um, you know, I have a teapot that I could choose which temperature I wanna boil it at. I'm gonna pour on it and see if it will expand, open up, and I will test it at different uh, temperatures of the of the water, see what it does. And I might even um, use like a little boiling pot to boil the water and then measure the temperature uh, of the water um, while having the thermostat inside of the water and to see like when it's gonna open and close. So yeah, that's kind of like what I, what I plan to do. Uh, but man, it might surprise how little of a problem that these Range Rovers could just start overheating like and what I mean by that is like basically you could just do like very minor things to it and then you get an air pocket in the system and then it's overheating like I mean like that you know and it's like wow it's so easy to get an air pocket so you really got to be careful um, with messing with these things and to properly bleed the system to get the air pocket out but I think today I gained a lot of knowledge from just doing the stuff you know do it myself and I'm sharing this knowledge firsthand before even um, before I forget this you know because right now it's it's fresh in my mind with everything that has happened I mean literally today I went from my vehicle overheating to fixing the problem to causing it to overheat again, to fix the problem again. So now, uh, yeah, I know exactly why they overheat. I know how to stop the overheating fairly quickly. Um, but anyways, guys, that is that. Uh, watch my videos, uh, what I did to stop it from overheating. Highly recommend it, because if your Range Rover is overheating, this could really, really help you. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.